so good. Joshua, you want to kick us off, man? Do it. Welcome to another Perspectives Podcast. Joshua here. Um, I'm a fellow Christian, as you guys probably know, originally from the Democratic Republic of Congo, or Orange University alumni. I'm a speaker. Uh, I'm a nice guy, as like people like to say. <laughs> we have Mr. Chase Brown himself. He's a uh, he's a native to Texas. Um, he went to uh, University of North Texas, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, he's a traveler. He's an aspiring philanthropic creative, and he's just a lot of different things. So, Chase, how you doing, sir? Yeah, doing good, man. Uh, chilling. Um, it's, it's been a really, really good last couple of days with just reading and catching up with friends and things like that. Because for a little bit during quarantine, I kind of went into my own little shell and was just chilling and was quiet. But it's been yeah. a good day. Uh, yeah. Last few days, just reconnecting with people. There it goes. Man, I mean, we're back. We're back. Another podcast. Yeah. We have the legend herself in the building. When I say in the building, I mean on uh, How you doing, Bosa? <laughs> How's it going? Hey, guys. I'm good. How are you guys doing? Good. Doing uh-huh. really good. But, but yeah, we're, we're excited to have you on. I think this is episode 27? No, 28 now of the podcast and episode five of the quarantine series where uh, we're bringing people on like Bosa, people who are creatives, um, people who are travelers, um, people who are artists um, to really just talk about um, how how this quarantine has been affecting them, um, what they've been doing during this quarantine to, to get through it. um, And, and the things that they've been able to focus on and the things that the Lord's been walking them through. Um, for this season to be really be fruitful, um, really be productive and not a waste of time because we know that God doesn't want us to waste <laughs> this precious time. Yeah, no, I mean, that's true. Um, as Chase was saying, we just kind of wanted to focus on something a little bit different during these uh, mini quarantine sessions that we have going on. So um, Bosa and I actually went to the same school. Shout out to Oral Roberts University. Yeah. Um, I met Bosa there. Uh, there it goes. Is that the or you? I forgot how to do it. <laughs> Uh, there you go. <laughs> so, Bosa, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Where are your people from? Uh, what do you do currently? Just uh, some shorts so we kind of know who we're, who we're talking to. Yeah. So my name is Bosa. Uh, full name Iyabosa. Uh, it's Nigerian, uh, which means God is my help. Um, live in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, born and raised in Houston, but then moved here. Uh, went to Tulsa, came back. I'm a creative. I don't know. I don't, I like to tell people more. So I'm a storyteller. Um, right now I'm currently doing social media, uh, for a ministry. Um, and yeah, so in my free time, I create, I story tell. I'm a spoken word artist. Um, it's kind of weird talking about yourself. I think this is, that's, that's it. <laughs> definitely, definitely can relate. It's funny because I, I kind of thought about that with Psalms a little bit, with David kind of talking about all all the little things that he was going through. I was like, dang, if you could write that many chapters about yourself, like, oof, like you're in tune with yourself, like it's crazy. I don't think I could do that. Yeah, but but yeah it's crazy so Bosa so uh I think it'd be good just open up the podcast just talk about a little bit um in terms of like this quarantine shutdown kind of thing just what it's been like for you from your perspective um what you've been doing to get through it and everything like that yeah uh at first when we started this quarantine I was super excited I was like yes time to catch up um, I don't think I really was took in this the fact that everything was shut down, like coffee shops. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm thinking work from home, and I'm like I'm gonna go to a coffee shop still. So I'm an ambivert, um, not an extrovert, but not an introvert. And so I have moments where I'm like, okay, Lord, um, but I'm just learning to lean on Him a lot more. I still I live with four or five of us in the house, um, so <laughs> there are a lot of people but at the same time I have to get work done and so I'm learning balance uh, I'm learning to call on him uh, which is one of the things he keeps telling me hey when you're when you're stuck just call on me um, so I think this season has really been teaching me a lot of depending on him more I, I think some somewhere in the hustle and bustle of life and the busyness I got distracted uh, in a way um, where it, it felt like it was me 
um, or like I can fix the problem. Problem came up, I would fix it. Or I'd ask somebody, right? And now it's like, oh, like there's nobody around. I would have to like take the time to Zoom call. So why don't I just ask the Lord, like, okay, how do I deal with this situation that just occurred? Um, So that's been one of the good things of quarantining is learning or relearning full dependency. Hmm. I mean, I think it's, um, yeah, like, I mean, everything really did shut down. Like, I was like, there's, you know, you heard about it. You're like, nah, it's not not really going to happen. It happened. You're like, whoa, (laughs) we've, we've never experienced anything like this before um, in our lifetimes. You know, a lot of people, I don't know the last time something like this has happened um, to hit the world in such a global, um, globally, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. And and like you said, you're you're an ambivert. Is that what you call it? Uh huh. That that means what exactly? Ambivert is like I'm extroverted at times. Like I'm extroverted when I'm around people. Like if if I go to a party by myself, I'll probably be considered shy. I probably won't talk to that many people. Um, if I go to a party with somebody I know, then. I will be able to go talk to other people, lead that person and just like their safety and just feeling like I know someone in the room. Um, But then I hit a bump, like I'll hit a wall, like extroverts get energy, like off of just being with people, like they can keep going. Amberverts, we get energy off people, but then there's a wall we hit where it's like, okay, all right, this is cool. So we have this like introvert tendency, but we also have this extrovert tendency. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does. I was just, I was just curious. It was a big word. So I figured I would ask, um, but speak to us a little bit about, um, you know, this time, how do you, um, how are you kind of dealing, coping with not being able to see friends? You know, I know, uh, from every place I've gone, you're always been with a group of people. It's a very sociable person as, um, as I know, and a lot of people know as well. So how are you dealing with not being able to see your friends? And yeah, just during this time. Um, Zoom, Zoom calls have helped a lot. Um, Google Hang. I jo- I got this app called House Party. Um, so started doing that, but then it's like any, I don't, it's a lot. House Party is a lot. So that Instagram, <laughs> it's like, there's so many ways to stay connected nowadays, like just being intentional and doing it and not wasting the time. Because sometimes I'll like, want to connect with people on Instagram and then I find myself just scrolling scrolling and wasting time and not really like connecting with them if that makes sense um so yeah google hang uh zoom I'm not gonna lie at first we were still having a lot of people come over um I wasn't taking it seriously I apologize to the world (laughs) Um, and then I was like probably we should chill out like we're still having dinner parties and I think our neighborhood, our neighbors are kind of like these crazy people. Like, and we live in a neighborhood with older people. I'm like, let's just keep them safe. Let's keep us safe and just like chill out. So, yeah, yeah I, I can definitely relate with that. Where for the first little bit, like I wasn't taking it seriously. And it's funny because one of my buddies, Austin, he was over in Berlin studying abroad whenever like everything happened. And then they shut the borders. And from there, it, like the day that they were there, like they shut the borders and it, it didn't really hit them. And oh. then it hit them at like 3 a.m. Like, oh, wait, we, we might need to get on a flight back home. <laughs> and so they got back. But like two days after he got back, um, like I invited them over to my, invited him over to my house just to like have dinner, just catch up. <laughs> <laughs> and i was like eh, i mean like he probably ain't got the rona like like it, it's it's all good <laughs> but yeah so i definitely understand um and so for you i guess because for some people they might be like alone during this time mm-hmm. rather than with people and so what what would you say um are some of the benefits well, we'll go a couple different ways what do you think are some of the benefits that have been able to come through you being around people? And then what have some been some of the things that you've needed to be kind of intentional about um, with being around people, like, like whether it be like distractions or wasting time or things like that? Yeah. I think the benefits are like, there's always someone there, right? Like I, I don't, I never feel like 
alone. I mean, there's still moments where I'm like, uh, uh, I feel alone, but for the majority of it, like you never feel alone, but at the same time, uh, like you're saying, there has to be a balance. Like I'm still working from home, so I can't always be around everybody or I'm not actually doing my job. Uh, which I want to be honorable in that. And so I've had to learn to not sit at the dining table, come to my room, do work from my desk, um, close my door. Like just people know, like if my door is closed, this is not a time. Sometimes they know, sometimes they don't, they don't know. (laughs) Um, So it just, it, it really is this like setting healthy boundaries I think every family, like I think about the parents who are working from home with three or four kids. I don't know if you guys saw the interview with that guy that was like a news prompter or whatever. He's a news reporter and he's like doing a news thing from his house. It's like years ago. And his like daughter runs in and is like messing up his desk. And then his wife like runs in and like grabs her. Like it was like this big dramatic scene and he's on live TV and it was hilarious. And I'm just thinking a lot of parents are going through that right now. So I'm, I'm pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> now that somebody, uh, one of my friends, actually recreated that scene. I know exactly what you're talking really? about. Yeah, I was like, why would you guys do that? Um, I mean, I think something that we kind of were talking about uh, before we actually started recording was, um, you know, being able to use this idle time, right? And you you left us with a very powerful quote, and I know that's something we kind of wanted to uh, get into. Um, I don't want to say because I don't want to mess it up. So if you can kind of speak into that and uh, the revelation that the Lord has kind of been giving you through that. Yeah. Um, he just really one day was just sharing with me like, hey, idle time reveals idols. So destroy them. Um, and really talking to this quarantine season where a lot of us like, yeah, I'm working from home, but I have a lot more time than usual now because I'm not having to get in the car, drive and do all the things that I would have to do to prepare to be at work. Um, even like put on makeup and like, (laughs) I'm not having to do like so many things, um, that normally I would have to do. So I have a lot more time. And so idle time reveals idols. And so I've been having to take the time to say, okay, Lord, reveal those idols, those, those things that have taken the throne in certain areas of my life and help me to destroy them, help me to pull them down. Uh, Because the only person we really want on the throne of any part of our life is the Lord. And so even looking at my finances, like idle time is, could be like scrolling and shopping for all of that time without realizing like, Hey, like, have you just asked God, like what he, what he thought about that? Like, you know, like just processing more like, Am I really letting the Lord be the king of my finances or am I the one like, I want to buy this and I want to buy that. Um, So yeah, I've just been getting a lot of clarity and tearing some of those, those gods, those other idols down. I think um, there's a word you keep using is Lord, 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 Lord. And I think that's a word that's uh, definitely been lost because in our day, we don't use that term uh, very often. So the meaning has just been lost. Um, So can you kind of speak to, you know, Jesus being Lord over our lives and to where these kind of decisions, you're like, I don't just want to make choices, just make choices, whether that's my finances, my time or whatever it is. How do I, as a person, bring Christ into my life as Lord and not just Savior? Yeah. Um, Lord is like, he is in control. I have really been in this, trying to change my mindset from Oh, I get to invite him into what I'm doing. And now like my question is, God, what are you doing? And like, how do I get involved in what you're doing? Um, actually asking him the questions. Cause it's like, I, I like it's just been hitting me during the quarantine. Like, bro, like he created my life. And so like he put this blueprint in, in place, like he has the details. And I would be almost foolish not to ask him what those details are, to say, like, you are the creator. So, One of the poems I wrote, it's like a short poem, uh, but it just said, creator created creation, creation creates. Uh, And like you go to Genesis, God is the only one that could create from nothing. Like, like, yeah, we're creatives, but we are creating from things that already created. Like I use Photoshop or I use paints that have already been created, but God spoke into darkness and created out of nothing. And so it's like, if this God that we serve, we truly believe he's the only one that can create from nothing, then why would we not think he cares? Like if, if the, the word says he, he knows the, the, number, the number of hairs on our head. And so he cares about the details. He cares about the little things. And so I've just been getting back to that place of just asking him because he, he knows a better way. Like 
he, he knows the best way and I'd rather be doing the best than just struggling to do my own thing. So yeah, Lord, just making him master, like just saying, God, you are in control, full control, like have my life. That's, that's been my prayers, Lord, have my life. Cause I don't want to just do this just to do it. Like I really want to live fully for him. And so, yeah. Dang. And that's so good. And yeah, I love, cause I think something just hit me because a lot of time we talk about inspiration and especially related to creativity and how for us as humans to create, like, we, I don't know if it's a requirement to have inspiration in a way to create um, or uh, I don't know, m- maybe even speak into that a little bit. Cause I love what you said about God's the only one who created out of nothing. I definitely think like that's, so true and so good. I know it's something that like has been talked about at like the actual creative co nights and and everything like that. And so maybe cause, cause thinking about it, even if like the Holy spirit speaks over us for creativity, that's still being inspired from something. Mm-hmm. And, and so maybe speaking to that a little bit in terms of what you think the role a little tangent here, but what do you think the role of inspiration is in creativity? And then maybe like during this quarantine, since you talked about being a creative spoken word, everything like that, if you've had any trouble finding inspiration to create during this time. Yeah. Um, for me, inspiration, I, th- I believe, and this is my thought. Um, I had to, I had to teach a class this last semester so i work at this this place called lifestyle christianity and then we have a school yeah lifestyle christianity university uh, and so i got to teach a creative arts class and so they're asking me someone asked me the question about um what do i think about like copying others to like get inspiration um and i was just reminded like yeah the, the bible says there's nothing new under the sun but as kingdom creatives we get to reach for the heavenlies um and when we get to reach for the heavenlies, that is us partnering with, like you said, Holy Spirit. I don't think there is any creative that is kingdom. Um, and again, making a clear distinction, going back to Axel, um, there's something different in in title. Like not just saying I'm, I'm a Christian creative. It's when you're a kingdom creative, you're saying God is Lord, like over my life. And so mm-hmm. therefore I'm partnering with him. And so yeah. then I don't. Like, I think that is the inspiration, but that's like the foundation of it is like, I just want to do what pleases him. So whatever he's saying, you're doing, um, and he's, he's leading you to create things that may actually never have been seen before. You're not creating something new though. You're not creating from nothing. You're creating with him from something, but it may never be seen because you're partnering with the heavenlies uh, and not just limiting yourself from what's under the, the natural sun. I don't yeah. know um so for me in this season there are moments where I don't like feel in like feel inspired but I feel like the Lord says sit down and write uh, and so I'll write or it comes out of like conversation um like I know we were talking earlier one of the things like that has inspired me at least in this last two days <laughs> um is just the Lord saying hey like it grieves me that you don't see yourself kingly uh and it's been something that's been chewing on like but that speaks to me back to identity. It speaks back to me, uh, to trusting the Lord. It speaks back to, to so much that I can chew on for a long time. Um, but as a spoken word artist, I know that's something I could use in the future for something. Um, but it was more so just a conversation I was having with the Lord. And so I think that as kingdom creatives, um, we get inspired by our relationship with him. And if we're constantly communing with, with our father, then, we, we never really run out of inspiration. We might okay. not feel like we're inspired, but if we just take the time to stop and, and do it, like we'll see that there's still, he's always speaking, like he never stops speaking. So. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> I'm actually glad that we're, we're talking about this. Um, I personally don't feel like I'm a creative or anything like that. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not me. Like that's not me. I just I just like doing little things just for grins and giggles. Uh, <laughs> but my uh, my question more so is because I really thought like this was probably from the Lord to ask you. You know, maybe this is something you walk through. How do you um, 
how do you overcome the fear of coming out with your creativity, right? Let's say I, I don't know, I play the piano and nobody knows. How do I, then now the Lord's calling me to, you know, play at this worship set or at the church, or maybe I'm an artist in uh, paint or whatever, but I don't want him to see my work. I don't want to be criticized. How do you overcome that fear and to where you're able to reveal your gift, you know, to the world or bring your gift to the world? No, that's definitely something I walk through. So I, I, I say I'm a storyteller. I'm also like, I like to do spoken word to help tell the story. Uh, but one of the things I felt like the Lord told me to call myself a few years ago was a social missionary, which meant I just started creating things for Instagram. <laughs> uh, and I felt really stupid at first and I really didn't want to do it. I, Whenever I first started doing anything, like I used to shake. Like just talking in front of people, I would shake, be so scared, like just terrified. Uh, there would, sometimes I would cry like, Lord, I don't, this is so stupid. You chose the wrong person. Um, but it, it really goes back to rem- remembering that the Lord, he qualifies the called. And so if, if he's placed you in a position, if he's asked you to do something, he's not asking you because he doesn't know where you're at. Like when, when God went to Moses, he knew that Moses stammered. Uh, and I, I love when, when, <laughs> Moses is like complaining to the Lord and the Lord is like, yo, what's in your hand? He's like a staff, like throw it on the ground and you see like what it becomes. And that's the same thing that helped in essence free Israel. And it's like, sometimes all God's asking us to do is partner with him. Sometimes he doesn't because, and this is another thing, like, and this might be a controversial statement. Y'all can cut it out. I don't know. Um, (laughs) Um, People always say, I'm going to do everything I can in the natural, and then God will add his super to it, and that's when it becomes supernatural. I do not agree with that statement. I believe if you stop and you ask him, you can do the supernatural from the beginning. I don't have to do everything I can in the natural, because sometimes everything I can in the natural is actually opposite of what God wants me to be doing. And so Mm -hmm. the thought is, like, if Moses by himself would have thrown that rod on the ground, it wouldn't have become anything because God didn't tell, if God didn't tell him to do it, he would have just been doing it for no reason. And by himself, he probably wouldn't have even thought about throwing a rod on the ground to help do anything. You know what I mean? And so I just think it's not always about doing what you know, it's asking the Lord for direction and then just doing whatever he says, knowing and trusting that it'll be good. And so the way to overcome fear for me is trust. Like God, what do you want me to do? okay, this is something way out of my box, but the only way I can overcome this fear is by trusting you. Uh, Because if I were to just do everything I knew to do, I graduated with an accounting degree from Oral Roberts University. I would not be doing social media, anything. (laughs) That's not what I knew to do, but it was just like asking the Lord these questions along the way um, that got me here. And some people are like, like, where's here? But for me, it feels like a miracle when you see the Lord just confirming his word over and over again. Uh, it just is like, wow, I'm, I feel like I'm living a miracle, even though I might not be the fanciest or in the flashiest, or, but just knowing like God brought me here uh, is just a beautiful, beautiful way to live. Um, so I think, yeah, to overcome fear, trust God and like know it's him. Uh, if you know it's him, you just step out in obedience. So you have to trust him. Dang, that's so good. And, and, and I love talking about qualifying the called. And I think another way of mm-hmm. phrasing that is like equipping the called instead of calling mm-hmm. the equipped. Cause then we could go to Ephesians four twelve, how he equips the saints for ministry. Like, and it's funny cause a project that I'm working on, like that's one of the topics for one of the days is it is exactly that and that's something that i've been stirring on for a while and uh a guy who like we just recorded um another episode with matthias from norway yeah. him and luca they're creatives within their missions uh organization jesus revolution yeah. and while we were on a mission trip with them luca specifically talked about like the ways that the lord can equip us for for ministry and how he sees more out of us than we see like out of ourselves. And, and I think speaking to like the supernatural part that you said, like, I, I mean, I haven't, I haven't really thought about this. Like, this is just a random thought related to that. But I mean, I, I mean, our faith is in something that's supernatural mm-hmm. rather than natural. And so even just from there, from like the start of faith and the start of trusting God, 
And then in the start of creating by being inspired by the Holy Spirit is all supernatural. And yeah. so it, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, I, I love that tangent of creativity because we've gotten into that a few times with some different people. And like, do you know the artist Montel Fish? Yeah. Yeah. So he, so he's one of our boys. We had him on a podcast uh, a month or two ago. And that was one of the first times that we got into creativity. And and so I love like when I were able to just talk about that every now and then. Um, but yeah. And so kind of going back to just this unique time and this quarantine and the Rona and everything like that. What would you want to provide some encouragement to any listeners during this time or some just thoughts that can perhaps like change their perspective on this season, like whether they feel like they've lost times or memories or like this is just a waste or just different things like that? Yeah. Um, I, I'm extremely excited about this. It sounds bad. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the season is extremely exciting uh, because it's a, I, I believe a season of awakening uh, for a lot of the bride. Um, and so I actually wrote a whole guide called the wait. This is not a plug. It's just like funny. It's actually free for download. If anybody, <laughs> um, I, I wrote this guide last year, like coming out of last year, um, coming into this year and it came from a season of isolation it came from the lord told me quit my job um and i d- became a freelancer and started working and there's something beautiful about seasons of isolation um and so i think that we're all going through this feels for season of isolation and but that means we get to lean more into him uh and through that we get a lot of wisdom and we get to become awakened to a true identity. We begin to come awakened to what he really has for us, his vision for our lives. And so it's such a beautiful time uh, to really lean into that and, and realizing that God is a restorer of time. So if you feel like, oh, like we're out of isolation now, I don't know when this is being aired, but if you feel like we're out of isolation, I missed it. It's okay. Like God's a restorer of time take the time to to pull back and lean into him. Or if you feel like you're just not hearing him clearly, just keep asking him, lean into him more. But this is a season, I believe, of awakening um, that God wants to awaken something new in all of us. Like we can, we, there, I always think it's funny. We, we never can know all of God. Like if we are all made in Imago Dei, the image of God, then we all carry a facet of him. And I cannot meet every person on the earth. There's no way possible. So just by that sheer thought alone, like I will never on this earth or even, I don't know, in heaven, like I will never know the fullness of who God is. And so this is a great time to get to know more of him. Uh, Whether you think that, whether you've been doing this for 15, 20 years, 10 years, or you just, you just got saved last week. Like this is a great time to just lean in and learn more awaken to more of what he's doing yeah i mean even um along those lines uh it looks like we got like 10 minutes left or something uh, but along those lines um especially with this time that we're using i wanted you to kind of speak on you know post you know corona like how do we go back to our normal in light of everything that we've experienced right now or even what is the new normal looking like like whatever your thoughts are on that yeah i think actually funny at lifestyle we did a a video uh so i did a spoken word uh where the the end the end line was this is the new normal join us um and it was a call to action of we are the generation that will pursue christ with everything that we have so at the end of rona i keep calling it little rona because i'm like i ain't gonna get punked by little rona (laughs) um so at the end of this like corona see quarantine whenever it leaves um, not losing the fervency, like I like continue to lean into him in the season, like awaken to what he's doing. I don't know in the natural what, like some people are losing jobs. Um, things are closing down. People are losing businesses. And so for me, like I'm, I'm praying, I'm like, let's, let's reach out to people. I think that that is a great way to continue. Like I, I've, I'm seeing people get more connected even more in this season. And I think that that's a beautiful thing. So don't lose that. Um, but also don't lose your connection to God. Like somebody gave the example and now I stole it. I use it all the time. I don't remember who it was, uh, but he was talking about the cross and how uh, 
like set a post in the ground, your relationship with Jesus, and then that holds the beam uh, of your relationship with others. I know this is a podcast and so nobody can see my hands, but like, it's just like, this is the cross. No, no we, we're going to have it on YouTube. So they, they, they'll oh. be able to see. Okay. I look a mess. I got, just why you told me that. I... <laughs> well, any of that, don't worry about it. Okay. Blur my face. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Um, But like uh, your relationship with Jesus uh, and then this holds your relationship with others. And I think that that's important coming out of quarantine to remember, seek him first and then build with others, really connect with others and trust him. Like you were were going back to like talking about fear. I think there are going to be some scary moments for a lot of people coming out of quarantine. Like, okay, it feels like life is restarting or what do I do? Like trust God. And so even in this, I would say prepare like during this quarantine time while we're still under lockdown, it feels like, um, is just to be preparing, like not to be waiting for Corona to leave before you start doing something, start doing something now. Um, so that when Corona packs the bags and goes, um, you already have a, a foundation that you've been building on. Even if you've only been doing it one, two, three days, it's easier to do, to build when you're not doing anything than when everybody's hustle and bustle again. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and I love that. And we had Sagoon uh, on uh, like last week. And one of the things that he said that really hit was um, whenever all this has passed, don't be in such a rush to return to community that you abandon communion. That's and that so was something where I was just like, ooh, that's man. So good. That's so good. Yeah. And so just everything that you said, just just back that up. And I think it's so good. And and yeah, it's just such a time for investment into the things that actually matter and, and, and is not a waste. Like we can't just sit here and like just not do anything or watch Netflix all day and like net, net, Netflix is good every now and then, but <laughs> yeah, not twenty four seven. But yeah, and so cool. We got a few minutes left, so um, we'll just give you the opportunity to just provide any like last words of encouragement or just anything like that that you'd want to to anyone out there. Yeah, I, I just I think the thought again going back to awakening. I know one of the things the Lord shared with me, like you know, when you wake up at first, like you have to rub your eyes to get the stuff out of your eyes. Like there's this process of waking up. So I say awake. And I think sometimes people are like, that means I got to be running full force. I got to be blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, like you're just slow. Like it could be a slow wake up, but just know you are waking up. Like every day, the goal is just to be better than yesterday. Uh, so like I said, I'm, I'm going through a season of like consecration. The <laughs> season is been every day. Corona is throwing off my days and my, <laughs> my weeks and my everything. Um, but like I'm going through a period of of reconsecration, not because like I felt like I sinned so much, but uh, because I want to lean more into Him. Like I, I want more of Him. So my goal is today be better with relationship with Him than I was yesterday. To ask more questions today than I did yesterday. So this is not a sprint. It's not a race. Life is not about like how fast can you get to X, Y, and Z de- destination. Like if we try so much to get there then sometimes we miss out on what God is doing here. And there's a process that needs to, to, to happen. Like I always think about Jesus and I always laugh, like Jesus didn't catch amnesia when he came to earth. Like he knew who he was, um, but he didn't start ministry until he was 30. And even then it took him three days to get to John the Baptist. And it says when he got to John, that John resisted him. Uh, you're going to see resistance in some of the things that you're, you're doing, like that the Lord is calling you to do. Um, but the process, that process that you have to go through, knowing who you are and then walking that three day journey, like walking with the Lord, even in that gray area where it's like, what's happening to where you get to your place and you still meet resistance. Um, and then Jesus, just since he knew who he was, was able to say, no, I, this is needed. And so for everyone listening, I would just say, hey, every day the goal is to get better. The goal is to know who you are in Christ. When you know who you are, even when you're in this gray area of life where it feels like I'm not getting to X, Y, and Z, I'm not doing such and such, like I'm not there yet. It's okay if you're not there yet, as long as you're with him. And so if you're doing this journey with him, when you get there, even if you meet resistance, 
you will know like you know this is where I'm supposed to be. And so let Jesus be your example uh, in this season in life in general. Um, don't don't rush to get there. Take the steps. Like just be better today than you were yesterday. Be better tomorrow than you are today. Um, that's in anything. Like that's but mostly relationship with Christ because relationship with Christ makes you better all the way around. Like he really will yeah. cut you and prune you like John 15 talks about uh, to, to really get good fruit out of you. And so that's my encouragement is it's not a race. Chill out, read five more verses tomorrow than you did today and keep building relationship and you're on your way to a, a great life. That's awesome. And even the fact that you brought up the pruning, cause we, that's something we talked about. Um, with Matias not too long ago, but, but man, I just want to thank you for, uh, for coming and joining us, uh, you know, during these times and on such short notice, I, I tend to do that sometimes with short notice, but uh, we're glad to have you on and just for you to be able to share so many different things. Um, I feel like a lot of people will definitely be able to, um, receive and take away a lot of things, uh, especially from a creative, uh, standpoint as well. That's awesome. Yeah. We really appreciate it, Bosa. Um, but yeah, y'all, that'll be a wrap for us today. Um, we'll, we'll link all of Bosa's information down in the description. If you want to support her, support her work, everything like that. Uh, if you want to support Axel as well. Um, and then, yeah, we'll have all of our information down in the description below. If you want to support us here at Perspectives and just everything that we're doing. Um, thanks to Bosa again for coming on. And then, uh, we got about a minute, 30 seconds left. Do you want to just press out real quick, Bosa? Yeah. Thanks again, guys, for having me. Yeah. Um, Lord, we just thank you so much for this time of fellowship. We thank you for this this time on this podcast. Uh, just lift up all the viewers, everybody listening. Lord, just touch their hearts in the way that it needs to be touched. We just appreciate you, Father. We do not take it for granted what you've done. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, amen. Awesome. Well, thank you all for listening and much love. God bless.